Welcome to the world of 1984. I'm here to do an unboxing of an item that's been, let's say, sold out for the past 35 years. Perry and I am the curator of the Sarnoff Collection, a history of technology museum located on the campus of the College of New Jersey in Ewing, New Jersey. And I'm here with an SJT 400 RCA Select Division video disc player. Uh, this particular player belonged to Dr. J. Brandinger. Uh, Dr. Brandinger was director of video disc operations from 1974 to 1984. Um, and this particular machine was donated to the museum by his estate. So let's find out what's in the box, shall we? All right, here we go. Let's open the box. Uh, we have to be a bit fragile. The cardboard is pretty old. What do we have here? Okay. First thing we have, first thing we have is the remote control. Random Access Control Center. Uh, if you have a random access player, it's really important that you have a remote. So here it is in its box. Oops, there it goes. Um, you can see this thing is, is hefty. It's a big two-hander right here. Um, I heard a story that uh, some vice president in charge of something or other uh, was afraid that children would actually uh, flush remote controls down the toilet. So that's why all RCA remote controls are so large. I'm not sure if that's true, uh, but it is a very good story. Um, since this is you, luckily there are no batteries inside of it, which is great. Uh, we get a lot of things in the museum with the batteries still inside and 35 years is generally not kind to batteries. Um, although it comes with batteries included, I'm assuming they are now dead. All right, so what's next? Okay, you have cords, uh, basic RCA cords to uh, plug everything into your television. Back here's another one. Okay, now we'll take out this cardboard shelf. There it goes. And now we come to the good stuff. First, we have some paperwork. Let's see. We've got a catalog of video discs, uh, all 391 of them available at the time. Uh, just on opening it, we see Annie featured pretty prominently. A couple of other ones, you know, all of the, all of the most famous uh, 80s movies. We have important safeguards. That's important to know. You should always read the instructions before operating electronics. Um, we have a, oh, a warranty card. Yes, um, in case I wanna fill this out and send it back to RCA. And we also have a nice note from W.T. Collins who is uh, wel welcoming me to the quote, large and growing family of RCA video disc player owners. We are very pleased that you chose RCA for we have designed your product to provide you with many years of high quality home entertainment. Uh, we certainly hope it will still provide entertainment because we plan to hook this thing up in the museum to a TV so people can uh, play RCA, um, play video disc video games on it. Okay, we've got a rebate, uh, very cleverly disguised as one of those giant um, remote controls. So what do we've got? Uh, a rebate, get $50 from RCA when you buy a RCA ColorTrack 2000 color television, color TV monitor, or projection TV. Um, RCA was obviously still making quite a bit of money in the 1980s from selling televisions, not as much as it was in the 60s, but still a not insignificant amount. So they certainly wanted you to buy an RCA TV along with your video disc player. And now we have the manual. Uh, first, a 
simplified instruction card so you know exactly how to load the disc, how to unload it. Um, obviously, like with any other video disc, you would have a disc caddy and then you would put uh, your disc inside of the player. We've got some more additional information just on how to use the player and we've got our owner's manual. Always read the manual. Um, I am not going to read the manual. Um, I have used a couple of video discs, video disc players before. Um, unfortunately, I have never worked with a functioning SJT 400, so first time for everything. All right, now the player itself. Uh, this is a job probably easier done with two people, but we'll make it work. Extracted. Oh, it has this lovely deteriorating foam on it. Uh, from a conservation standpoint, foam is not very good to keep next to your electronics because it starts to degrade like this. Uh, it also makes um, conserving things like foam earbuds almost a nightmare. Luckily, at the Sarnoff collection, we don't have to deal with that but we likely will not store this player with the foam just to keep it from deteriorating. And now here we have it. Let me take off the other bit of foam. All right, brand new in-box video disc player. You know, straight from the factory, it comes with its coiled, perfectly coiled, um, cord. Looks like there used to be a rubber band on it. The rubber band has now degraded. That does happen with rubber bands over time. You even have these tabs. Uh, before use, you have to take them out. Looks like I just took them out. And this is it. This is your SJT 400 video disc player. Uh, you can use this to play interactive video disc. Obviously, it'll play any kind of video disc, but it will play the interactive ones as well. Video disc system was introduced in 1981, and it was just for linear playback from start to finish. Uh, but engineers obviously realized that you can use a disc system like this uh, for um, non-linear applications. You could go from one part of the disc to another. And the SJT400 was the first player to capitalize on this. It was the first player that would allow a user to jump from place to place to give it some sort of interactive function. When this uh, particular player was developed though, RCA and the RCA video disc system didn't have a whole lot of money. Um, video discs had taken a really long time to come to market and they weren't really making all that much money yet for RCA. So product design engineers were told you can't really change anything from the old player, the SJT200, which was the model before this one. So any application, any changes to the player had to be done at the level of the microprocessor and the software. And that's what engineers did. So the, um, the hardware of this is very, very similar to the hardware of the SJT200, but it's only with this thing that you can get this interact interactivity, that you can move from, from point to point. And the very first demonstration games came out around the same time that this player did, and that was this uh, demo disc. It's called the Entertainment Game, RCA's Interactive Demonstration Disc. Uh, this was only for promotional use. It was not offered for retail sale, uh, but you could go into a um, you can go into a, a TV seller uh, or a um, department store, and you could see this in action. It had a few games on it. It had a lot of trivia. It had some Star Trek trivia. 
Um, and hopefully the idea was that you would want to buy one of these SJT 400s and one of the 21 promised RCA interactive video games. Despite generally positive reviews, uh, these games were not profitable enough to save the video disc venture. Uh, in April of 1984, RCA decided to pull the plug on the video disc project. Uh, they did commit to manufacturing video discs themselves uh, for another three years, but this was the end of the video disc system, and unfortunately it was also the end of RCA, which was purchased by General Electric not too long afterwards. The video disc project ended up being a very expensive failure for RCA, um, and obviously the video disc really didn't make inroads into the consumer market, and for quite a few reasons. Um, but at any rate, the video discs may be gone from store shelves, but they are not gone from the museum. So we do hope you'll come to visit us at the Sarnoff Collection, where you can see the SJT 400 and other video disc related ephemera.